there are lots of technologies and communication that go into building a smart city. Join us in historic downtown Austin, Texas, as we talk to SoftServe about using the cloud to make smarter and safer cities. So what is a smart city? That's the question of the year, I think. Uh, so for years we had the, the notion of this is the year of mobile. And it feels like now it's, this is the year of the smart city for the last couple of years. And it means something different to everybody. Uh, I like to think of them more in terms of intelligent environments as opposed to smart cities. Because for one city, becoming smart might mean adding lights that can get brighter or, or dimmer as lighting outside changes. It could be uh, having autonomous vehicles. It could be having uh, technologies and sensors put in place to help people with disabilities. Uh, really what I think it is, is it's an environment that interacts with the people that are inside of that environment. And that's why I tend to drift more toward intelligent environment where that could be a vehicle. It could be a campus. It could be a building. It could be this space that we have right now. If we can be in two places at the same time, physically and virtually, then I think that's a smart environment. Have there been any examples that you can talk about of cities kind of creating intelligent environments? Sure, so in the Carolinas Alliance for Innovation out of Greenville, South Carolina, uh, we've gotten more into the connected citizen in the smart city environment and first mile, last mile transportation solves. Uh, and what that is, is what happens when you have five or six different connected and or autonomous vehicles, all different systems, needing to speak to each other, to the environment, and traffic control needs to be built. And what we were able to do was create a multimodal transportation, uh, let's call it viewpoint, single pane of glass control tower type of thing, where we we're able to see not only where are the vehicles, but what's the most efficient mode of transportation from a cost standpoint for the connected citizen to get from point A to point B, and also what's the most efficient routing for emergency services vehicles and what have you. Essentially, we're starting to solve the big problem that the public sector has with digital technologies, which is interoperability. So how does one system talk to another? How do they bi-directionally inform each other? And we've been able to do all of that in GCP. And a lot of that is based on, like you just mentioned, getting a lot of data, being able to collect it. What does all that technology look like, especially when it comes to Google Cloud? When you have just massive amounts of data coming in and, and really new sources of data that maybe you hadn't contemplated before, it creates piles and piles and piles of code to go through and, and data files to go through. And the simple fact is, is that what used to take years to do can now be done in minutes with BigQuery. So a great example of what this might look like is collecting from a whole bunch of sensors, which is largely IoT, but like you said, that could be a tire, that could be cars, that could be traffic lights, that could be anything. Collecting all that data, transforming it and making those data decisions, especially the legal ones about who owns which data, who gets visibility into it, making sure it all kind of can play nicely together by aggregating it, and then ultimately doing analysis on it. Yeah, I think so. And, and really, I think the, the key term here is enablement, right? Or even empowerment. It's the idea that technology took off at some point and the government was focused on other things. And now technology, that whole internet thing, yeah, it's not a thing, it's here, it's not going away. And so now the government's in a position where they say, well, how do we manage it? How do we tap into it? And I think what's happening is Pandora's box has been opened and it's saying, okay, well now it's open. Wow, we didn't know all of this was here. And as they implement solutions like smart lighting, like smart cars, and the connected citizen becomes more and more pervasive, well, now what do we do with all this? How do we manage it? And then as they drill into it, they find out that this is almost bottomless and we have to have something that scales long-term. Now, there's a platform that SoftServe offers that kind of looks at all of these aspects. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So we call it the Intelligent Municipality Platform. And essentially what that is, is it's a data store built on GCP that allows for collection from myriad points of data, uh, export and connections to any destination so that we can enable the public-private partnership to work together and create a digital ecosystem that sits on top of this. So we start out with the basics of where is the data coming from? How many different systems do we have? How do we put them in play to work with each other? And then from there, we now start to say, okay, what are the benefits? Well, what if we can distill things like amber and silver alerts and get them to the city corner as opposed to the entire zip code when a message goes out? So that's a public service benefit. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of this wouldn't have been possible without some of the advancements in the cloud, especially recently. 
I, I think it's 100% impossible. Where would you ever put enough computing power to make it happen? So both because of scale and because of the technologies being offered, but also some of the new, like you mentioned earlier about BigQuery and being able to, to quickly analyze huge amounts of data very rapidly. All of these things have kind of enabled people to ask, how can I improve? Where can I use this data and how can I analyze it? I think so. Uh, I also think that the ease of use, ease of access, and in a way, and I'll use this term abstractly, a bit of standards, right? There's a certain understanding of what the Google Cloud Platform is, use these tools to do these things, uh, and you can have people coming out of school ready to jump in and adopt this. Well, that takes a lot of the fear out of it for a public sector entity, and really for anyone. Well, thanks so much for coming in, Ron, and telling us about how SoftServe helps enable companies, including the public sector, to really understand and do more with their data. Sure, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, and stay tuned for more customer interviews on Stack Chat.